Today, I'll be attempting the hardest rebuild I've ever done. I want to win a national championship in NCAA football, but I can only schedule the highest ranked teams available, and I think Notre Dame would be the perfect team for this challenge. Not only are they an independent school so I can choose every team we play, but they were also mentioned in the comment that suggested this video idea, so this should make for a very challenging rebuild as this is our first schedule. I'll only be allowed to jump into three regular season games a year, and I want to continue using your all's ideas for videos, so make sure to leave them down below. The first thing I have to point out is pretty much all of our best players are seniors, so that means we have to start with recruiting, and because it is such a difficult challenge, there aren't any restrictions on it in this video. That should allow us to recruit a ton of studs, and I'm also going to go through and redshirt anybody that won't see the field this season, which will give them an extra year to develop. Our opening game of our first season is against NC State, and I am going to sim this one, which we're going to get the loss. To have a good season with a schedule like this, we can't start off on the wrong foot, but on the bright side of things, we do have a lead on every player that we want so far, and I think we have to play this one against our rivals. Winning a championship with a schedule like this will not be easy, and I'm learning very early on that this rebuild might take a long time. I'm not quite sure how we picked up that fourth down, but you're not going to see me complaining about it. It's just that there's nobody that can get open. Michigan's cornerbacks have been sticking to our players like glue all day, and now we're just going to be throwing an interception to end the first half. So I think you can see where this game is going. With a minute remaining, we were eventually able to get some points on the board, but just never enough to keep up with the Wolverines, and my first season here might be a disaster. The only thing that could fix this year would be a win over number three Michigan State, and with college game day coming to town, I have to jump in. This is an opportunity to redeem ourselves, but it turns out that number three Michigan State is pretty good. We are going to score here, and I'd love to say that it would make a difference, but it's not going to, as we are going to clearly lose this game by a ton of points, causing us to lose our third game of the year. I'm definitely going to get fired a lot in this video, so I think it's safe to assume that most of this season isn't going to matter. We did get our first win against Pitt, though, and evidently that was massive, as seven players committed to the program after that. Now I can focus on recruiting even more players, and I'm finding gym after gym. We might lose the rest of our games, but that's okay as long as we finish with the number one recruiting class. The one shocking result we had was we beat number six USC, and that led to more players committing to the school than any other week. The fact that we had landed pretty much everybody that we wanted already at this point in the season was very exciting for the future of the program, and the fact that we went three and nine in year one with Notre Dame shows how difficult this rebuild's really gonna be. By the end of the year, I had filled up the recruiting board, so I can't even put points on this player, and although I did get fired for the first time, I was ready for attempt number two, which was beginning with the number one recruiting class in the country. The real issue going forward is just going to be winning games because these schedules are so difficult, but I'm going to go through and redshirt every one of these high overall freshmen that we just brought in, so that way by the time these guys are seniors, they're hopefully going to be 99 overalls. Then while they develop, we're just going to continue to bring in even more talent, and that's how I'm going to win a national championship with the hardest schedule ever. We're projected to be the 37th best team in the country, but I don't think they realize how hard our schedule is. We're opening it up against number four, Oregon State, where we're going to lose in overtime, and that loss hurts because now we have to play at number two, Oregon, and we're also going to lose that one. On top of that, I'm not really excited for anybody in this recruiting class besides Terrence Gibson because he has 98 speed. This is probably going to be another rough season, so I'm just going to sim a few weeks. Of course, we lose at Miami, and even Texas A&M just beat us. After also losing to Alabama, I feel like I need to step in, schedule everybody for a visit, and pray that we don't lose to the Tar Heels as well. Sophomore Steve Angeli is our starting quarterback, and we have somebody wide open from the jump. That is going to be a huge play, and hopefully he can go all the way. This is exactly what we needed to do to open it up, and I know that we're 0-5, but this could end up being what turns around our season. Deion Colsey already has two touchdowns on the day, and to end the half, it's going to be tied up at 17. This is definitely our best chance to get a win, as Jaden Thomas is going to be wide open for six, and what we need is a defensive stop, but Jacoby Criswell, who isn't even on the team in real life anymore, is going to respond right back. It's probably not smart to go for it on fourth and one, but I'm going to do it anyways, and that is going to turn into an interception. In the end, we're going to lose because of my own abilities on the field, and we might not win a game this season. Luckily for us, that doesn't seem to want to stop recruits from committing to the program, and we're still getting almost sold out stadiums, so I guess I can't complain. I'm not going to be upset when Ohio State blows us out, and even though we did get college game day, does it even matter that USC beat us by 33? I can't bounce back from getting fired for a second time, and we have one of the best recruiting classes in the nation. So at the end of the day, it is what it is, and I'm honestly surprised we finished the year with two wins. Due to injury, neither of our quarterbacks were great, and statistically, I'm not sure there's much for you all to see here. Well, after getting fired again, we're on to Marcus Freeman 3, and currently the program is in shambles. Two of our best defensive freshmen are transferring to Georgia, and that stinks, but at least we got the number one recruiting class again, with the most important player being 98 speed Terrence Gibson. He's going to be an 82 overall wide receiver, and now we're starting to see some development out of some of the younger 
guys. It might be a couple seasons before freshman Justin Bush ever sees the field, but all that really matters is that we keep bringing in highly talented prospects because one day we're going to have to win it all with a schedule like this, and I don't know how. Now, it looks like we're projected to finish as the 45th best team in the country, but this year, I'm hoping that we can do better than that. I'm going to jump into our season opener, and we're going to see if we can beat number eight Utah. It certainly won't be easy, but we need to start our season the right way, and hopefully we can finally get into the end zone, which we are able to do. After holding Utah to a field goal, I just want to be able to get into field goal range, and I think that throw is going to make that possible as the kick is up, and it is good. We are only going into the half down by three, and this feels like a real opportunity to go down the field and score a touchdown. If our defense can keep playing this well, we should be okay, and I think the Utes are going for a last second comeback, but we cannot allow them to make that happen. Come on, that's got to be a tackle. The good news is all we need to do is hold on to the ball, and I didn't think they'd blitz there, but we had somebody wide open over the top, so that's unfortunate. We're still going to pick up the first down. And ladies and gentlemen, since Utah has used all of their timeouts, that's going to be game. It feels good to start the season with a win, and that was literally all it took to get us ranked in the top 25. This might be the first year I don't get fired, but I probably shouldn't get too far ahead of myself because we play Miami next, and we're going to lose. Well, considering all three of our next matchups are top six opponents, I think you know where this is about to go, and I'm actually surprised that we won at Oregon. The big ones at undefeated North Carolina, though, they probably still have Drake May, and he just destroyed us. But with that result, all that really matters for the rest of the year is landing all of these prospects, and everybody's scheduled for a visit against Michigan, so it would be nice if we could get a win in this game, which we're not going to be able to do. On the bright side, what we've learned is visit week doesn't seem to affect if these players commit to our school or not, and we might not get the number one class this year, but that's okay because we already got a lot of guys that are just sitting and developing as we wait. Considering we keep getting blown out, I'm giving up and simming to the end of the year, and of course, that's when we finally win again. Against Florida, we make it back-to-back -back games, and we even beat Bama on the road, so I don't know what's going on. Surely we don't end up beating Georgia as well, but I guess I'm wrong, and that four-game run is incredible. I stopped simming to jump into the UCLA game, but we're already bowl eligible, so I can sim it, and we're going to lose by 31. You know what? At the end of the day, I'll take just not getting fired, and look at that. We made our first bowl game in this rebuild. It should be a guaranteed win, so I'm able to sim it, and next year, Steve Angeli is going to be a senior. So will Gibran Payne, who rushed for 900 yards, and we even had a 1,000-yard receiver. Even though I didn't get fired, two players are still transferring out, which is super frustrating, but nobody wants to stay and compete for a position anymore, which is why I'm just glad for the third year in a row, we had a very good recruiting class. We were able to replace both our kicker and our punter, along with getting a lot of players that are probably just going to be great depth, and even though we lost our tight end of the transfer portal, I have a fullback that's going to easily replace him. Well, I'm pleased to announce we finally got our first 99 overall, and I'm obviously going to continue to recruit, but I feel like we have about everybody we need that will win us a championship. The roster keeps ending up being too full, so I have to resort to cutting players, and I wasn't kidding when I said I was going to redshirt everybody throughout this entire rebuild. Going into year four, this is our schedule, and for the first time in this rebuild, we have a 99 overall team. Now, that's certainly no guarantee that we're going to be any good, but this is our best chance at having a good season so far, so of course, I have to jump into our first game. Steve Angeli's a senior now, so I feel like he should finally have a good season, and with five minutes remaining, we do have a lead, but there's a good chance it doesn't last. There's no pressure, so they're going to be able to get that route bounce for a touchdown, and hopefully we can prevent them from tying it up, which we're able to do. Unfortunately, it looks like they're going to score with two minutes left, though, and I'm hoping we can go down the field relatively easily, but their defense has been very solid, so I'm just going to have to take off with Angeli. If this is going to be the final drive of the game, we need to run the ball, and there is no way he just lost it there. You've got to be kidding me. They're going to pick it up, and I don't even think it matters if I make this tackle, because our senior running back just fumbled the ball, and we're going to lose the first game of the year because of it. That is so annoying. Apparently, he got hurt on that play as well, so that is insanely unlucky, and on third down, the running back's going to get to the outside. We bring him down, though, and I'm not sure how, but he was marked short. And this time, I have to pass the ball, so I won't be running it. We won't be fumbling the ball, and I think we have somebody wide open on the bounce route. That throw is going to be picked off, and just when I thought we were about to have a good season, it starts out on a bad note. At least we beat Auburn, and I'm very tempted to start Justin Bush just to develop him. If we lose another game, that's what I'm going to have to do, but I'm surprised we beat North Carolina, and now we're going to take on Miami, where we're going to double their score. I was not expecting us to bounce back, but now we're sitting inside the top 10, and I think we should schedule everybody for our game against number two, Ohio State. I'm hoping we're going to be 4-1 and one going into that game, but we have to beat Penn State first, and we're going to do so. What a turnaround this team is having, and now we have to take on the best offense in the country. The good news is it is a home game, so I feel like we have a decent chance of getting the win, but on third down, Caleb Brown gets wide open. Unfortunately for us, only the Buckeyes have gotten on the board so far, and I thought our offense was pretty good, but their defense has been clamping us up, especially when they run man-to-man -man coverage, nothing gets open, and I'm honestly just thankful that a 
approaching halftime, we have a chance to get it within a possession. I was really hoping we would get six out of this drive, but it looks like it is going to be a field goal. I just need to throw this ball away. And at the end of the first half, it is going to be 16 to 10, except I miss. It literally just doinked off of the sidebar. And I can't blame anybody else for that but myself. It makes me sick we didn't get points there, but we're coming out in Wildcat, and I'm going to get to the outside here, and he is going to lose the football. I don't know what's going on, but my players clearly just can't hold on to it. What do you mean by that? And yes, I understand this is not the result we are looking for, but at least we're still sitting at four and two. We're still on pace to have our best year yet. And since Middle Tennessee State was the only ranked team we could schedule, we should have a freebie in this one and we win by 10. Surprisingly, some of the top 10 teams that we scheduled to start the year are not doing well like USC, so we're going to blow them out. And I feel like we should probably beat Texas as well, but that shouldn't be a surprise. With a 7-2 and two record at this point, we're still not that far out from making the playoffs. And I really wasn't trying to do that well in recruiting, but when you coach at a school like Notre Dame, it is super easy to get a ton of amazing guys. Now we just need to go out, take care of business, beat five and four teams like Alabama, which we are not able to do. And I felt comfortable simming that one because they were having a down year, but that turned out to be a mistake. And now we're going to take on Tulane where we're going to rail them. And I thought our playoff hopes might be ruined, but we are sitting at number five right now. So if we beat UCLA, we might get in and they also had a down year. They started out ranked like 15, but as an independent school, we don't get a conference championship game. So I really don't see a way that we end up making it into the top four. And I guess it's now time for the moment of truth. Despite our strength of schedule, we finish at number six and somehow 12 and one Ohio State didn't make the playoffs and Michigan being number two at nine and three makes no sense at all. So maybe I'll have to adjust the playoffs in the future. Either way, in the end, we made the orange bowl against Miami. I'm going to go ahead and sim it and we're going to get blown out, which makes no sense considering we beat them at their place earlier in the year. But you know what? It is what it is. And Tennessee ended up winning it all. To know that that could have been us if we didn't get cheated out of our game against them is frustrating. But at the end of the day, I'm building up a program and we have two transfers yet again. There's not a chance I'm going to be able to convince either of them. Or maybe that's not the case. I've lied to him twice already. I'm going to do it for a third time and he is actually going to stay. Joel Jones, you probably won't ever start for me, but at least you believe it. And now I'm just going to tell these people that they need to stay and get their college degree so our team can be even better this year. We also had our biggest draft class yet, which means we did lose a lot of players, but I'm not even sweating it because once again, we signed the number one class and I wasn't even trying to do it, but now I'm probably going to have to cut some of these amazing players. This isn't necessarily a bad issue to have, but I have nine athletes that need to be assigned a position. And the issue with that is now I have to cut nine players to get the roster size down. After doing that and taking a look at all the players on this team, everybody that's going to be starting for us besides our wide receivers are juniors or sophomores, which is amazing because they're all like 90 plus. And that means that maybe not this season, but next season, we're going to have a great chance at making a championship run because all these players are going to be super good. And I just went on a very long tangent, but I wanted to show you all, all of the amazing talent that I've built up because this has been an insanely difficult rebuild. And I feel like this is finally the year we might actually make some noise. Every single team on our schedule is ranked 14th or lower to start the year. And I'm ready to beat this rebuild challenge with this 99 overall team. Our new starting quarterback is Justin Bush. And I'm excited to see how this year goes with him. He is throwing a laser from the jump. And this drive has gone so well so far. It's been super easy to move the ball down the field. And I think we are going to get in on this play. The best part about this is he's only a junior. So we have another year with him. And I'm hoping the going back and forth can end pretty shortly. With four minutes left, we have a four point lead. And I thought it was a smart decision to go for it on fourth and two, which is going to convert. And it turns out it was the right decision. Just like we were hoping, it looks like we are on pace to go out and beat Alabama. That should have been a pick, but unfortunately it wasn't. And they're probably going to get in here, which they do. They can still get the ball back with an onside kick. So it is not over yet. And if we lose another game because we can't hold onto the ball, I'd be annoyed. And this is exactly the way that we wanted to start our season as we hopefully start our push for our first playoff appearance. Justin Bush did well in his first start, and now I think it's best if we send to the Ohio State game, but we're going to lose at Penn State, and that's not what I was expecting, but we should beat the Sun Devils. They already lost one game, and now they've lost two. One result shouldn't ruin our season, but that means we have to beat the Buckeyes, and that's going to be hard playing at their place. Approaching halftime, we are trailing by seven, but I'm going to try to at least get us in field goal range, and look at that route. It is going to be wide open. That's an amazing throw down to Harris. So hopefully we are able to get into the end zone. I'm not seeing anything open that I like though. I think we're going to have to take our three and I hate to actually do it, but it's a smart decision. It's been a defensive battle so far. So points are going to matter and we're just going to shred their defense here with Burgess getting us down inside the 10 and hopefully taking a lead with a throw here, which we are not able to do. Of course, their corner played that. It's honestly remarkable how tight this game has been. And I still don't think anyone's going to get open here. If we get an interception, that could be huge, but of course we don't. And we cannot lose to Ohio State again. Come on guys. We just got to lock up one final time and look at that we had something go our way 
that definitely should not have been a drop, but it was, and it gives us an opportunity to get the win because they're going to be aggressive and go for it, and they're not going to get it. We have been waiting for this moment, and now they're going to press us. We have somebody wide open. Somehow the throw got off. That was almost a safety. We're going to toast them instead, and I think that is going to be the go-ahead touchdown. He might have gotten tackled short, but it's not going to matter, and this is our chance to get revenge. They're running it on third down, and for some reason, they are running the clock down all the way the two minutes and punting us the ball. I was expecting a fake there, but I guess they're not going to do that. And it didn't make much sense to me, but now they have us on a third and 16, which we need to pick up and that throw is not going to do it. They were able to commit to the run and we were not able to do much about it. Now they're going to score. And all I can really do is hope that they do it with a lot of time left on the clock. We did force a fumble here, which is a huge play by our defense. And that means there's already under less than a minute remaining. Now we're going to get another sack, putting them on a fourth and 12 where they don't feel like they're able to kick it. And that's going to be it. We're going to get the interception. This is beautiful. It is over. And we are going to upset the Buckeyes at their place. That'll get us up to number five in the country, but now we have to play number one Miami. And this is the final game I can jump into this year. They embarrassed us in the Orange Bowl, so I need to get revenge, and that is a terrible throw to start us out. What are we doing as a team? That ball was at least three feet off target, and I'm embarrassed to say that it has taken us this long to get down to the field, but we're going to finally score. It took me a while to get the offense going, but now we're starting to get into a little bit of a rhythm, and it's finally starting to feel like Miami is in a little bit of trouble. If I'm able to finish this drive off, that would be four consecutive touchdowns, and now they're on a third and 12, which they're not going to come close to picking up. In the end, we improved to four and one, but we do have one pretty significant issue. I've already played all three regular season games, so I just have to sim to the end of the season, and I have a hard time believing that we're going to keep getting wins, but that's a huge result. Unfortunately, LSU beat us the following week, and I'm pretty sure what happens at this point won't really matter. Our strength of schedule is really good, but I don't know if it's enough to get into the playoffs, but we haven't lost since the LSU one, so maybe we still can't. I guess it's time for the moment of truth, and I just realized that I completely forgot about recruiting. On the bright side, though, we are somehow sitting as the number one team in the country, and we might not have had a Heisman winning player, but Justin Bush won the Maxwell and the O'Brien, and we also finally made the college football playoffs. With Army as our first matchup, I'm not even worried, but maybe I should be, because they've done a fantastic job of staying in it, and there's no way. But of course, they picked it up anyway, because they're a run-heavy team, and the good thing is, they can't really throw the ball. I'm not thrilled that they're about to make it 10 to 10, but their kicker stinks as well. And I'd love to talk about how embarrassing that is for them, but I am struggling to move the ball offensively. Until I'm able to take a two to three possession lead, I am not going to make fun of them anymore. And look at these recent throws. Terrence Gibson has been getting wide open, but evidently not on this play. Just when we finally started to get into a rhythm, we are going to collapse. And I don't know if our kicker can make it from 56, but I'm going to attempt it and it is going to be good. The one thing we can't do though is let Army end the half with a touchdown. And that was a big sack, but that still left a little room for error and we are going to give it up. Or not. Somehow he was stopped short. I will definitely take that. But what will be important is more defensive stops and that should have been one, but of course they're going to pick this up. This is the computer cheating. At this point, you've got to be joking. There is no way they are going to score a touchdown on a play where we should have had a sack. I should have known better than the talk bad about Army, but now we're in this position because I did and they're going to pick that off as well. If they pick up this third and eight, I promise you I will lose my mind and they're going to do it. A wide receiver that is known for just blocking, but it doesn't seem to matter as he beat our corner off the press and now we're missing throws. I definitely got way too cocky and now we are probably going to pay for it. Finally, we stopped the pass, right? Okay, there we go. It isn't over going into the fourth quarter and we learned earlier that this is not a guarantee for their kicker. Just six minutes remain and we have a season to save. Hopefully we're able to do something that is a bomb that is going to be underthrown and stuff like that is why we're in a fourth down situation. They gave us another press look. This time it also wasn't open and there's a flag on the play. Please tell me this is going our way. We need to get bailed out here and that's what's going to happen. So it's fourth and five, which we should be able to pick up and I'm not able to. This is by far the most embarrassing game I've ever played, but it's time to make a strategical switch as our fastest receiver is going on the outside and they've been giving us these press looks all game, but I haven't been able to take advantage of it yet. And now we are finally able to if the ball wasn't underthrown. If 99 speed isn't able to beat army cornerbacks, we are in a load of trouble and we are finally going to get our little bailout. It's going to be 30 to 20. So don't count us out yet because we know they're going to run the ball and they just pitched it on the ground. Someone bounce on it. That was our opportunity and we blew it. Instead, they're going to get a big gain. And if they pick up this third and seven, I'm going to be sick and they're going to be able to do so. I've tried to save our timeouts and it turns out that's going to be a great decision. It took longer than I wanted, but we're getting the ball back with a minute left and a chance to stop the clock. It is still possible to come back, but it is going to have to happen quick and we are going to need a lot of dots. I'm going to have to hike it quick and R1 is open for a big gain. And now we're starting to get into a little bit of a rhythm. X is going to be
be open as well. That is going to get us down inside the five, but he drops the ball when we need it the most. I'm not going to lie. If he holds on to that, I feel like we still have a decent chance, but now I'm not so sure about it. That's going to be deflected. I'm going to go ahead and take the field goal, which might seem like a dumb decision, but if we don't get this onside kick, we still have three timeouts that we're able to use. I honestly just want a chance and I cannot believe that they just passed the ball, but now I'm kind of scared that they're going to pick something up here and the option is going to break free. You've got to be kidding me. It's over. And I was in disbelief that we would actually lose to Army, but it happened. These SEC schools just can't be stopped. And it looks like Joel Jones entered the transfer portal again because I broke every single promise. If I can't get quarterback Justin Bush to stay, we're in a lot of trouble, but he is at least going to. And I'm not quite sure how it happened, but we finished with the 13th best class. I literally forgot about recruiting and a lot of these people on our board we didn't even get, but I'm not going to say anything and I'm just going to appreciate the fact that we have 499 overalls. And I want you all to see how crazy of a roster we've been able to compile in just six seasons. I think this is going to be the year that we finally get it done. It was supposed to be last year, but that didn't end up happening. Like always, the schedule isn't going to get any harder than this, and you all know that I have my eyes set on this Army game. First, we have to get there though, and in our season opener, we're going to go to Wisconsin and win by a ton. We are projected to be the number one team in the country, along with having our quarterback in the Heisman running, so I'm honestly expecting us to cruise to a lot of easy wins, and there's another one. I have to be very selective of the games we jump into, and Tennessee already lost one, so this is one that we're going to have to just skip over. But then the next week against number two Georgia, there's no way that we can't afford to play this. I would love to go undefeated this year if possible, and if I lose any games with this team, it is definitely my fault because we are really good. Justin Bush is one of the best quarterbacks in the game, and that is exactly why. What a play. After losing that last one to Army, I just want to blow everybody out, and I'm also playing smart, which means I'm taking the points when I need to. Unfortunately, Georgia's going for a little late rally, so we probably need to lock up, and we forced the fumble. That's exactly what we needed right there. From there, it was pretty easy to seal the win, but while taking a look at the rest of our schedule, I realized that we might be in a lot of trouble. I can only jump into two more games, so we're going to have to sim some of these, even though I'd love to play them. And I know that on paper, we're better than Army. I think it was user error for why I lost to them last year as the computer beats him by 24. So the undefeated streak continues, and once again, we are playing against the number two team, so I have to hop in. And with a couple minutes left in the half, we're down by six. Now, I don't believe it'll last, so I'm not too worried yet, and they just pressed our 99 speed wide receiver, so this should be a touchdown here as he's just quick. Terrence Gibson was the one recruit I pointed out that I really wanted us to get, and if we're going to finally win a championship, it is going to be because of him. He just opens the game up for us, and with about a minute left, we still have an eight-point lead, so we just need to hold the Hurricanes one last time, and we should be good where they're going to pick up the first down here, though. They're moving the ball pretty well up to this point, and I just gave up the touchdown. That's why I should never be usered on a safety, and they're going to fail the two-pointer. I might have almost choked, but we should be able to get the win as we recover the onside kick. 7-0 never felt so good. And at this point, I think we have to go ahead and advance to the LSU game. We're just going to have to hope that we go out and win every matchup. And I can't believe how much we blew Arkansas out by. The Tar Heels are the final team we'll face before the Tigers, and we're going to win by 24. So at this point in the season, we are sitting in a very good position. I feel like we could go out and lose and still make the playoffs, so I am going to sim, and that was the right decision. I was a little worried to do that, but we're probably going to play LSU in the playoffs anyway, and I still can't believe we did it, but with this insanely tough schedule, we went 12-0. and Now, I do have to say, I am disgusted Justin Bush didn't win the Heisman because he led the country in passing yards with the toughest schedule ever, and somehow, for the second time in this video, Ohio State got snubbed from the playoffs. I don't know why, but it seems like the computer absolutely hates them, and let me know in future videos if I should just adjust them myself. I read the comments all the time for your all's feedback, which is exactly why this challenge even happened, and I'm looking forward to doing more rebuilds based on the suggestions in this video. What a catch that was right there by Gibson. And I guess forward progress doesn't exist because they didn't give us the first down. This early on, we cannot afford to have bad luck, so Bush is going to finish it off. And to end the first quarter, we should get onto the board again. In fact, we're doing so well that I'm going to try to run some trickery out of Wildcat. And unfortunately, it didn't work, but we're still going up 17. And the craziest part is their offense hasn't touched our side of the field yet. If Ohio State made it, they would have been like a two seed, so they wouldn't have been our first matchup, but I can promise you whatever our first matchup was would have been a better game than what this has been. What a catch. And I think this one is already over. Well, with four minutes left, they're about to bring it within seven, except they missed the extra point, so they weren't even able to do that. And now we are just in a position to dot him up. That is a great throw to Terrence Gibson, who's going to get down to the two. And I'm not going to lie, I did get worried we were going to choke for a second, but I think we're going to be okay. It feels good to actually win our semifinal matchup this year. And our championship opponent is surprisingly going to be Arizona State. And let's see if we can complete this rebuild. Well, if I'm being completely 
completely honest, so far this has seemed like the easiest game ever, and I'm hoping it can stay that way so I can bring Notre Dame a championship. They played a real schedule this time, so they do deserve it, and I know it's only 14-0, but I am feeling so confident that I am going to run a fake punt play, and it's going to work for a big game. I'm even going to run a fake field goal on the same drive just because of how I'm feeling, and there's no way we pull this one off as well. That is embarrassing. I am sorry, Sun Devil fans, but you should have known that this was not going to be your year. And with 18 seconds in the half, it looks like they are going to finally get into the end zone, but not if we can get a defensive stop, and that might be possible as they are not going to do it. So they're going to still have zero points, and it turns out that this rebuild challenge was possible to do, which makes me more happy than ever before. I thought it would be very difficult to complete, and for a while it was, but we officially were able to bring Notre Dame a championship. And if you made it this far, make sure to leave a like while letting me know what the next rebuild should be.